In North City, on the corner of Hogan and Market Streets, the imposing form of St. Laborious had sat empty and silent for decades, until a group of St. Louisans turned it into a new kind of sanctuary, a skate park and youth center called Skate Laborious. Everyone needs a third space. You, know, you got work or school and home, and then you need a third space that's safe and productive. And if a safe and productive one is available, people will utilize it. But if not, then they find any other third space. They find, you know, bars or drugs or gang, you know, whatever. People need a community environment. Co-founder Dave Blum had originally showed up at St. Laborious to help with the urban farm outside. Although the church itself had sat empty for over 20 years, other parts of the complex were being used as a shelter called the Karen House. They were an amazing shelter for women and children, but managing this type of thing is not at all in their wheelhouse. Dave soon realized that his extensive skill in working with old buildings, and especially heights, was of more use inside the sanctuary itself. At the time, I was a welder at the City Museum, building big, weird, crazy stuff for Bob Cassidy. They were like, well, um, do you know anything about working on old buildings? I was like, yeah, yeah, I know a lot about that, actually. Like, well, nobody wants to climb up in the tower and help us shovel out all the pigeon droppings. I was like, well, that's where, where are your shovels at? But the work to be done to make the building safe and habitable again went far beyond getting rid of pigeon droppings. It needed massive repairs that it never got. If you don't get it done in a reasonable period of time, it stops being repaired and you have to like tear it all out and rebuild it. So we approached them and asked them if they would give us the building and they said, please, please take it. And so we took it and started uh, working on it. Brian Bedwell, whose nonprofit KHVT was responsible for the construction of St. Louis's only free public skate park, heard about his friend Dave's efforts to save the church and made him an intriguing offer. He knew that I had huge volunteer forces that helped me do all the things that we were doing in the in city, in city. And I was like, basically told him, was like, you let us skate here, we'll take care of a lot of things for you. At first it was like, oh, let's you put a couple ramps in here if you clean up some bird poop. But what started as a few ramps soon became a skater's wonderland. I know what time to be here for the sunset. I know what time to be here for the sunrise, for like that perfect sunlight session. And I love it. When co-founder Joss Hay moved to St. Louis from Scotland, he discovered Skate Laborious on social media and upon arrival was smitten. I reached out to Brian, one of the corners, and I, I got in touch with him and I said, I see you need volunteers to help. He said, okay, brought me inside and he, he took me to the biggest pile of pigeon poop you've ever seen in your life. And he said, okay, we need this moved. And I was like, no problem, you got a mask. And that was it, I was hooked and I, I never left. I, I just wanted to be a big part of the place. Devoted parishioners who dropped their tithes in the collection box over 130 years ago never could have imagined that the church they were helping to build, with its soaring ceilings and awe-inspiring stonework, would one day be used to serve the community in a completely different way. Visually, it's just like a beautiful juxtaposition of unlike things. But more than that, like skateboarding is like a very underestimated, like powerful, like positive community force for young kids. It doesn't matter what color you are, what creed you are, you know, what religion you are. If you can't do a kickflip, you can't do a kickflip. If you can't do a kickflip, you can't do a kickflip. Kick it's a community sport, but it's an individual pursuit. You have to be down to fail and try again and again and again to achieve your goal. And so it turns out to be a really good stepping stone for life a lot of the time. For me, it was anyway. And the young people who flock to Laborious aren't just there to skate. They also have a say in the construction of the park. It's like whoever shows up is who decides what gets built, which is pretty awesome because it gives a lot of people ownership over it. The DIY nature of skateboarding also applies to the work of preserving the church itself, which not only builds character, but skills for the future. They understand they love the skate park, but there's no skate park without the building. To see like a lot of young kids like take real ownership of what we got here, and it's really beautiful to see. Like we have these big volunteer days. Dozens and dozens of people show up and we're bucket brigading, mortar up to work on the tower or doing woodworking or working on the roof and stuff. And so through that, we've been able to train a ton of kids, like a ton of kids like now are like pretty decent tuck mortars and like decent bricklayers. The cavernous space is not only perfectly suited to the sport of skateboarding, but more importantly, to the long-term goal of transforming the whole structure into the laborious urban art center with part of the sanctuary being developed into a gallery for local and visiting artists. Love it here, it's Kate Laborious. Great community project. 
I mean, a great place to enhance your creativity. Skateboarding, the art, the murals, hopefully gallery show soon, we'll see. The enormous basement will be converted into workshops that are determined by the community's interests or needs. I feel like it's an opportunity and an eye-opener for a lot of people to figure out something they enjoy to do and, you know, be able to possibly make it profitable, just learn a couple little things of stepping stones to get to somewhere. We're here for the people that maybe don't have that hobby yet that they, or they do have, but they can't nurture. It's not like in our city there's a lack of aptitude or ability, it's just a lack of opportunity. The way we look at it is like underserved urban youth, like that's, that's the congregation here now, and like that's who, that's who needs these types of places. But the Arts Center won't be replacing the skate park. They'll work in tandem as an outreach to those who want to discover a new skill or hobby. All the people that run other art centers and community centers, they all kind of tell us the same stuff. They all say that it's really hard to get kids to come in their door and, and be engaged by their programming. We don't have that problem. Like, they beat the door down to come here. Within this time period that North City is in with the NGA about to arrive, I think that we're not the only ones here looking at this area for a way to plant a seed and to watch it grow. We are here to to be a part of something bigger. For Living St. Louis, I'm Kara Vanninger.